Hi, I'm Jake, one of the core DJL developers. In this video, I'm going to talk about DJL inference. Typically, inference workflow involves three steps, data preprocessing, inference, and data post-processing. Let's use image classification as an example. The inference step in the middle can only take ND list in and ND list out because in the deep learning world, model doesn't understand the image. We have to convert the image into a bunch of numbers. In computer world, a color image is represented as a two dimension matrix with three channels. Element values range from zero to 255, representing the RGB, red, green, and blue. We can create an ND arrays on top of this matrix. This is called data preprocessing. In addition, there are several preprocessings like crop, normalize to get the better result before it is ready for training. After running the model inference, you will get probabilities for each label. You pick the label with the highest probabilities or top five and map the label index back to human readable label. This step is called data post-processing. Similarly, for an NLP task, in data preprocessing, you convert the text into ND arrays and convert them back in data post-processing. Given the flexibilities of data preprocessing and post-processing, sometimes the code become messy. So DJL designs a new class called translators to organize them. We offer a bunch of widely used translator based on different type of applications like image classification translator, object detection translator, question answering translators or text to text translator. We are still implementing more. These high level translator provide necessary functionalities and abilities of customizations for your own model. Take image classification translator for instance. There is an add transform method in the builder to add common image transformation, including center crop, resize, normalize. Actually, you can also implement your own translator. We will have another video for this topic. Before we get to model inference call, I would like to introduce Criteria API. It is introduced to make the model loading easy. A model can exist in local disk, our DJL model zoo, a distributed file system like HDFS, or elsewhere on the internet with a URL. Model loading for different source could be quite different. By using Criteria API, we get minimal code changes for different location. It uses builder patterns and provide abundant filters to help you find out the model. The load model method returns zoom model, which packages model and translator. We will dive into Criteria API in another video. Here is a simple example to load the model from local disk. Opt model URLs specify the file path URL and opt model name specify the model name. The opt model URLs can also be replaced by opt model path. DJL support various engine and each of them have certain model format to follow. For Apache MXNet, hybridizable model is supported. If you get a Golang model, you need to hybridize your models and save both model architecture, symbol.json, and parameters, .param file. For PyTorch model, Torch script format is supported. If you have a Python model code, try to use gtrace or gtscript to compile the model. For TensorFlow, safe model format is supported. If you have Keras Edge 5 model, you can use Keras low model to get the Keras model object and use TF save model safe to save it as safe model format. One of the key advantage to use Java is its powerful multi-threading features. Unlike Java, Python has its own limitations on threading due to global interpreter lock. So some of deep learning frameworks doesn't handle multi-threading use case well. To mitigate the impact, DJL introduced predictor which provides a section concept for model inference. When you run the inference concurrently, each thread should has its own predictors to make sure the inference call is three safe. Under the hood, if the engine doesn't support three safe inference, 
DJL duplicate the model pointers to avoid rest condition and manage the resource for you. Creating a predictor is simple. Just call model.newPredictor. Then run the predict method to get the output. To optimize multi-threading performance, you can find more details in our document. We will dive into this topic in another video. In summary, to run the inference with DJL, you create a translator, load the model with Criteria API, create a predictors from a model, and finally call predictors.predict. This is how powerful DJL is. Here are translator, criteria, and predictor Java doc. You can find more detail there. Join our Slack channel to ask questions. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.